it's a powerful yeah. one that actually has meaning in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so not recognizing it is a problem. all this because you haven't quite said the word yet so I'm just gonna say it reparations <laughs> and I think my favorite word it's I just you know I think if there's a word you're that someone is afraid of that's a sign that we should talk about it and have discussions I mean one of the most maybe the most successful or downloaded article ever written in the Atlantic is Ta-Nehisi Coates a case for reparations right. has 13 examples of successful reparations. I come, you know, I came here from Hawaii where reparations were real, like where lands were taken from Japanese people and they were interned. And President Reagan went on public address and gave them money for the experience that they had. So when someone's like, well, how can we ever do reparations? I'm like, well, maybe all the ways we've done it before and ways we're still doing it, California and other places. Right. How can we know? Right. Is more than. Yeah, yeah I, I just um, had a meeting last week with um, some people from the WISE program and with um, Jerry Hawkins from uh, Dallas TRHT, Truth, Racial Healing, and Transformation. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Jerry told a story that was about reparations that was of a different kind, but so powerful, I thought, which is that in Fort Worth, the Broadway Baptist Church, which is a predominantly white church, has um, done a project, which is a reparations project, because from the 20s, the 1920s through the 1950s, I want to say, they had a black janitor, faithful worker, loyal worker, who was never allowed to um, go into the sanctuary. Good heavens. And, um, so they they did. He can't just drop that on someone. <laughs> they did research yeah. and um, they found his family, and um, the the reparations they decided to do was they commissioned an artwork of him. They learned about his life and who he was, and uh, they commissioned a painting of him by a, a black painter, and it's hanging in the sanctuary as a reminder to that church of you know what they did and you know how they need to be better mm -hmm. did they do anything beside the painting well they 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 had a ceremony whether there was any money involved i don't know but they they had a ceremony for the family and you know acknowledged the wrong that they had done to him and um you know it i think it was a a powerful kind of reparation even though it wasn't you know paying them money i mean and there's also, I mean, churches like um, the Episcopal Diocese, I believe, in Rhode Island, which, I mean, Rhode Island, for those who don't know, was, I mean, in their entire formational economic structure was built on uh, the slave trade, has uh, done con considerable reparations out of their accumulated wealth. And so, again, these, and these are things that happened after uh, Coates' article. People are finding new and creative ways. And you raise a really beautiful point of this can be a wide-ranging discussion. There's financial, of course, and there's also um, sacred, I would call that. It's like, how are we going to find the holy, which comes from the root of wholeness? Um, there's a Native American scholar, uh, Professor Tinker, who looks at a lot of what we see as sort of white plagues of depression and of other illnesses. And he, he's not casting aspersions, but he does wonder, could, could something of that be inherited guilt, inherited pain, inherited, mm -hmm. something that is actually a kind of inherited trauma that people aren't realizing is happening? And that is there a road to healing for all people that involves wholeness that is also, in a sense, holy? And I'm just, I'm just citing published authors here, uh, <laughs> but is there a wholeness piece? I mean, uh, to me, it just seems like, of course there is, but. Well, years ago, 
we did a program called Journey Toward Wholeness. Mm. And um, the objective, I think, was to create a sense of wholeness among the congregation. Um, that program did not finish. Um, we've had a couple of programs like that that start out with great fanfare and then sort of fizzle mm -hmm. um, because of lack of lack of commitment, I think. Um, and you know Mary Lou Hoffman. Mm -hmm. Mary Lou Hoffman still is into Journey Toward Wholeness. Mm -hmm. um, and just uh, gave her, her, her archives to us. Mm. We've, we've talked about that. I don't know if it's actually happened yet. Okay. But, yeah. um, and so we start and we fizzle and we start and we fizzle. Um, I'm hoping that what the church is doing about church history will be strong yes. and continue. Yeah, and that's, that's something, if people have articles, I've been working on this and other people have, we're trying to really write the church's racial history. There's a lot we know, but there's also pieces that we don't. And if there are articles, I know some people keep things in scrapbooks, just snap me a picture and send it to my email. If you have articles, we're just trying to piece together timelines and fill out this, a fuller expression and understanding of where we've been. Cause it's hard to know where we're going. I just think we're in this beautiful time now of reflecting on the last century and a quarter and to know where we want to go in the next century and a quarter it really helps to fill in everything that we can know and so working on this racial history of the church uh, set against Dallas and what's going on is important to us so if you have those articles if you have that stuff you let me know just send me a note so yeah um, can I go back to your question about what we're, what's coming up? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Um, we got so, more. Yeah, so we talked about uh, what we're doing with Race, the Power of an Illusion just uh, beginning of November. And then if we turn the page to the next calendar year yes. um, in January, um, we plan to have an all-church event where we are going to celebrate, well, we're going to talk about civil rights and the history of race in Dallas. And uh, we're going to invite uh, Michael, Dr. Michael Phillips, who has written a book, um, White Metropolis, about that very subject. Great. And, um, you know, we are going to have uh, civil rights leaders who were living throughout that time that come and talk to us as well. Um, and uh, so hopefully there will be food and, you know, discussion, and uh, we'll be able to, to talk about that. Great. Yep. So that's Sign one event. And one yeah. event, and then in March, <laughs> um, we've got a personal race story event coming up, and we're going to invite everyone in the church after the eleven o'clock service to come and see some folks. A big part of the small group discussions that we've done since we started the task force um, has been asking the participants in those discussions to be introspective and to think through a personal race story that they will share with their small group. And that race story is supposed to focus on how have my relationships, how is my behavior, can I give an example of my behavior and how it's been impacted by this white supremacy culture? And, um, you know, we, we as white people tend to make ourselves the hero of race stories that we tell, but, you know, that's not what we're aiming for here. And, mm -hmm. And so we're going to have a handful of folks um, tell some race stories. We're going to have a keynote speakers ahead of that. Um, and uh, then we are going to ask that people who attend and learn about this come back in a week or two. We don't have the date yet, but a week or two later. And we're going to put you in a small group. We're going to have you tell a race story to your small group. So yeah. that's what we want to do. 
And this is something that every board member, every staff person, this is, we're just inviting you into experiences that we have. And if you want systemic change, you reach everyone in a system. It's not really rocket science. And so part of this is growing that expansion of this uh, exercise, which I've done myself and is challenging, but I didn't come to church. I personally don't come to church to just, you know, sit around and look around and, and do this stuff. I want to be challenged. I want to grow. And I think a lot of people come to this church looking for spiritual growth and real work. And doing the personal race story, I could feel it in my body. And I could feel the unfolding and the recognizing and that work. When you really start to get into it, I think that's what a lot of people are looking for and maybe don't aren't equating racial equity work with the spirituality that it offers and and the spirituality that it takes to do. Well, that may be something we need to work on. Um, I think the hard part about the race stories is identifying something that has meaning. Right. Because all too often, the race stories are about how wonderful I am that I did X. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, that's not the point of the race stories. The point of the race stories is to see yourself in, to see oneself in the world and the things that we're doing that don't help, mm -hmm. <laughs> that don't help racial equity at all. And so um, that's, that's an important part of it. And one of the things I want to say is one of the things that has been a disappo disappointment to me is that we, with our small group discussions, I feel like we've sort of hit a wall. We've gone mm -hmm. as far as we can go. Mm -hmm. And there's still quite a few people we haven't been able to touch. And I don't know, maybe what we're going to do in March will touch some more people. Mm -hmm. um, but what I want is to touch everybody mm -hmm. in the church. And um, that's proving to be difficult. Yeah. Yeah, it, it has been difficult, and we've been talking about it, you know, for a while now. But um, you know, we've got ideas. When I had um, Daryl and I were both in the meeting that I mentioned with uh, Jerry Hawkins and the Wise folks last week, and you know, they have a um, process at TRHT that they use called a racial healing circle. Would you explain what Wise is? Wise, holy informed sexual education. Oh, we had Sherry on the podcast. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, yep. the, the, the devoted Watch the watchers wise. of this yeah. podcast know <laughs> what Wise is. <laughs> um, but yeah. It was a great podcast, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, we teach OWL to first, sixth, and eighth grade students here at the church as a sex ed program, and we decided to export it to the community um, several years ago, and um, it's been a flourishing program in the community. Yeah. Um, but um, you were they, talking to Jerry Hawkins. Yeah, Jerry Hawkins and, and Jerry's group, TRHT, which is a national group, and, and Jerry's the head of the Dallas chapter, um, they do racial healing circles, which is a different approach that has some overlap with what we have done in small group discussions. But it's, it's a one-time thing. I mean, you can go to multiple ones, but it's a one-time thing, which you know has its benefits from mm -hmm. a scheduling standpoint, purely logistical. What you standpoint. think we're all over scheduled as a people? <laughs> That's crazy. Um, and but it also has some really cool ways of making connections and bonding with people. Um, that the process itself, you know, is designed to heal and um, is designed to create connections and and overcome 
the barriers that, that our culture teaches white people in particular. You're not supposed to talk about race. It's, mm -hmm. You're uncomfortable talking about race. You are the default race. Why do we need to talk about race? Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and, and it's designed to you know, get past all that. Um, and the other thing is that white people tend to think they have no race. Right. They don't, it's other people mm -hmm. that are racial. And so that is not good because even though it's an illusion, it's a powerful yeah. one that actually has meaning in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so not recognizing it is a problem. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you both for coming. We covered more ground than I said we were going to cover <laughs> because we always do when we all talk, which makes me happy. Um, and I just, it's been a real honor to learn from you both and to work with you both. And I think, I think a lot about what our future can look like as a community that is growing and learning and both of your leadership attitudes toward progress and making it uh, to me is a, is a real light. And so I really enjoy doing Thank this you. with you both. Uh, right back at you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in. You've learned so much I know today and uh, maybe more than you bargained for, which is, <laughs> that's just kind of how we do it here at Tiny Pulpit Talks. So, you know, if you have questions or comments, something tells me we're gonna look, get a lot of questions and comments on this, which is fine. Put them down there in the chat. We wanna hear from you. Like us, subscribe. You can review us in your favorite podcast syndicator. And until next time, we are sending you our best from Tiny Pulpit Talks and we'll see you on Sunday. Bye-bye.